Hello everybody and welcome back to another FF14 video. I am your host Chase Sauce and today we will be talking about ways of making gill with crafting and gathering. So without any further ado, let's begin. Okay, so let's talk about gathering. There are three professions in this discipline and you have mining, botany, and fishing. Mining will primarily supply goldsmiths, blacksmiths, and armors. Botany will go to with alchemists, weavers, and carpenters. And fishing will go with culinaries and alchemists. Leatherworking is something that is supplied for all three uh, of those professions, plus some of the crafting professions. So let's uh, begin with the first way you can make some gill. And this one can be done from level one. So uh, let's go to a level one area so I can show you guys. So here we are on one of the very first areas that you start with when you begin your mining adventure. And we have a level five mineral deposit. So if you go to this mineral deposit as a miner, you can see here, level one, fire shard and water shards. Now I'm giving you guys this example with the miner, but this can be easily obtainable on the botanist. It's the exact same thing. So let's grab some fire shards. This can be do done from level one. So we grab the fire shards here as level one and then we go to a market board okay once you get to a market board doesn't matter where just it's a market board we're gonna put fire on the search box and the top results gonna be fire shard fire crystal and fire cluster those are the three variants of that material we just mined and fire shard would be the most valuable one as it is the one that gets spent the most. And as you can see, a stack of 1,000 goes for 71,000 gil. And you can start farming these, as well as leveling your gathering professions. And this is mining plus botany from the get-go, from level one. And you can start making money. Now, don't be don't be intimidated by the number that's there a thousand they are easily gathered because it didn't happen on that example it usually procs and you start the next hit's going to be two crystals the third one's going to be three and the fourth one's going to be four so just uh, make sure that you spend a little bit of time doing this when you're leveling up your botany and your mining and then selling the crystals if you're not interested in crafting just yet not only you get EXP, but you will make a tidy sum of gill. Now let's go to method number two. And for that one, we will have to go back to the same area. Okay, so here we are on the exact same area. Just to show you that you can employ both methods at the same time or alternative. And this time for method number two, we will be gathering raw materials for the crafting professions for the sake of this example that we're using the miner we will be doing this primarily for goldsmiths and blacksmiths so if you go to the miner mineral deposit i'm sorry you will notice the level one copper ore now copper ore is used for the production of ingots Okay, so here we are. We're gonna grab a chunk of these real quick. Also again, you can start this on level one. It will give you EXP plus the raw materials. And once you finish your uh, leveling section of uh, your gathering profession, it's time to go. That's right, you guessed it. To a market board once you get to the market board what you're gonna put is copper or gonna hit search and right here copper or sales 
the normal quality for 49 gil a pop now if you notice here 49 gil and you get 12 it gives you 588 gil and you're like oh that doesn't look like much no it does not but if it, this is just a byproduct of your leveling, this is all gil. It's bonus gil. It's basically free money. And if you use any other kind of ore. Let's see. Durian ore goes for 140. Copper nickel ore goes for 310. This is all stuff that you can gather. And why? Why would you, uh, why would you go to the trouble of mining ore if it's such a level? Because this goes into the manu the production of ingots, and these ingots are absolutely essential. You start from bronze ingot, which is sixty a pop. Go to iron, and the copper ingot, which is ten this these ingots are the basis for crafting on blacksmithing armory and goldsmithing people will always be will always buying this it doesn't look like much and it's not gonna make you rich quick but the the act of farming gill is not sprint but a marathon and I'm talking about the mining but if you put logs which is one of the primary uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry one of the primary uh, uh, gathering mats from a botanist starting on maple log which is level one you get okay that, that one's an aberration right there but you get at least 15 guild per and a stack of 42 will net you 630 guild this is on level one if you go up the tree so to speak 25 for ash logs 1,195 for you logs 445 gil for walnut you get the point the higher you go with your crafting class the more money you get and if you're leveling it these logs and all the mats you get from your gathering professions are a byproduct of your leveling section and once you finish your session you can go to any market board and sell those mats that you're not gonna need for right now for a pretty penny and last but not least the third method is not so much a method that you can actually touch your returns for say you're not making any gill but you're saving it and that ultimately makes you gill what I'm talking about is if you have mining botany and fishing all three of those gathered up the costs for your crafting if you decide to go into crafting will decrease somewhere between 50 and 70 percent you will only be required to buy the mats that can only be gotten with uh, tombstones or have to be bought from certain vendors anything else that is out in the world you can gather at zero cost and for that third reason alone you should always start as far as leveling priority for the your crafting side of things you should always start with your gathering professions and their priority should be first one could be mining botany and lastly fishing because fishing is not as profitable as the first two but mining and botany need to be leveled ASAP. And of course, this will lead us to the ultimate part of our video, which would be crafting itself. So let's start with the priorities. So the most important crafting uh, professions you can have would be armorer, blacksmith, alchemist, and culinary. So let's start with alchemist and culinary. Why should you have these at level 80? Very simple. Alchemists, as well as culinary, have the ability to craft this.
this. Grade four tinctures. Strength, dexterity, vitality, intelligence, and mind are tinctures. Are tinctures or called raid pots. Raiders will take these to their raids and they spend about three per pole. So that means they can spend upwards of 40 per raiding session. And people will always be raiding, my friends. So this will always be bought and sold until the end of the tier slash expansion. How much can you make it? Can you make selling these? Let's uh, take an example with uh, the tinctures of straight. So let's copy the name, go to the market board and put it on the search. Now remember, you always have to do high quality. Normal quality does not sell nearly as well, but high quality, a stack of 50 like you see here, goes for 3,900, which is almost 200K per stack of 50. A stack of 99, if you wanna do stacks of 99, and people will appreciate you for this will net you 396,000. Well, you know, if it's at 4K, if you take a gill out, it's probably gonna be like 395, or yeah, 395 and 500. I don't know, I'm not that good at math, but I know that if you do it, like it says over there on the screen, all right, without me having to do any math, a stack of 99 at 4,000 at 4,000 a pop will net you 396,000 gil. Now let's move on uh, to to the culinary. The culinary, much like the alchemist, will also be contributing for raiding, and in this case, raid food. So we got chicken fettuccine here, which I, which as you can see, I have all the mats for it and smoked chicken. Chicken fettuccine is primarily a food for tanks and smoked chicken is a food for DPS and I hear that some of the healers use it too. This again is a consumable and is bought and sold. As long as there are people raiding this tier, this will never wane out. So let's see, smoked chicken. Now let's go with fettuccine once again. Let's. Let's copy that name real quick. Go to the market board, paste it. And ch uh, chicken fettuccine sells for 4,300 a pop. A stack of five here, as you can see, will net you 21,000 gil of high quality. Now, remember, that pots and red food need to be crafted with high quality. It will not sell nearly as good if it's normal quality. Even if the price is lowered, the stats are not the same. Let's see if we can find, oh, a stack of 99 here, 435,000 gil at 4,300 gil per. Okay, that takes care of the alchemist and the culinary makes sense. Raid food, raid pots, everybody consumes it. This will sell at all times, right? But what about blacksmithing and armor? Well, blacksmithing, blacksmithing is more of a glam thing. Okay, I will uh, give you an example. For instance, if you are a blacksmith, and you have the master recipe six, you are able to create the glam versions of the Stormblood weapons. Now the glam versions have a difference between them and the normal ones. I'm gonna give you Tsukiyomi's, which is the most hotly contested item right now. This is what sells better. The reason for that is because it is exceedingly rare. You will have to go into combat to get the material to uh, to craft this weapon. And the material that we're talking about is the Celestial Kimono Remnant, which we talked about in the previous video, how to make money with combat classes. But 
if you add the combat class to the crafting class and you get your hands on the celestial kimono remnant and let's do the samurai weapon as an example this is what it looks like see that glow people will pay a lot of money for that glow it's actually they're really good weapons glam wise all right you'll be able to craft a tsukiyomi moonlit chokutu right and if i copy the item name you go to the market board and put that as a search parameter you can see here that the katana sells for an excess of 2.7 million and if you go to the history Do you have the three latest ones that were 1.5, which is not bad. This is still over a million. And before those, 2.9, 2.9, 2.8. So you would venture to say that these three were actually a bargain. And the regular price is between 2.9 and 2.7. That's what we have right now. And last but not least, the armor. The armor is more about the glams and bardings. So here's a perfect example. So this has the same type of mat. So we're going to make an example with the trial of ruby. As you can see, if you get the ruby plating, which is the personal uh, item of uh, the trials, that we talked about in the previous video which I will link down below on the description and put it on the top right corner of your screen right now the ruby barding and the weapon bust can be crafted by a specialist armor so ruby barding let's uh, find let's geez let's try that again Okay. So now, last but not least, let's talk about the armor. So let's go to the armor tab here. And what is it exactly that we can make good money out of it? Question, the question is simple and the answer is even simpler. Barding and trophies for trials. Both the ruby barding and the ruby weapon bust require as the rarest item the ruby plating and this item can only be obtained whether by the synthesizing uh, equipment that you get as drops from the trials or this ruby plating drops directly at the end of the fight it is a rare drop but it happens so once you get that Ruby barding, uh, you you will be able to craft the ruby barding and the ruby weapon bust. So let's see how much those are going on the market board. And bear in mind, this is an older trial. You can do this for like the most recent trial as long as you spend enough time farming it. So let's see. Let's see barding. And the ruby barning goes for 421,000 gil, just for that craft alone. And if you look at the history, it went to, at its highest point, almost half a million, all the way to 422. So it's safe to say that it is on the 400,000, 500,000 bracket. All right, so that was for the barning. What about the bust? Well, let's find out. Copy item name, market board, ruby weapon bust. It's currently going for 824,000 per bust. And as you can see there, it, the price actually varies. He had, it started on 345,000 a few days ago. There was one that was sold for 75,000. That was probably a bargain price. Then it went up to almost a million. 
and that decreased to 400 it's all over the place and now the last two were sold at 800 825,000 and that's what most uh, mostly the pricing is on my server right now and this would be the fort and the most important of the most important crafts to have of course I would recommend you being an Omni crafter because there are perks to that including the ability to repair oneself without going without going to any repair guy this will cost you no money except for the fact that you always have to have grade 7 dark matter in your inventory that item needs to be on your inventory at all at all times once you self uh, repair that is the catalyst that's needed to get all of your gear back to 100 percent condition that's bare minimum as you can see right here my headpiece is at actually 152 percent sizing which is something you need to have if you are a crafter this is one of the your main I wouldn't say main but this is a big one for crafters so the art of the synthesizing in a nutshell means that if you, you can grab any piece of armor weapons you will have this this option right here now if you synthesize this Oh, and you pass a certain rating, you have an increased chance of receiving rare items. So if you just synthesize it. In this case, we got Battlecraft Demon Materia 2 plus Wind Crystals. There are certain items that if to synthesize, there is a chance to get a really rare item. Okay, which you can sell or use it as a mat to craft. On this case, we actually got a good one, which is Battlecraft Demon Materia. So we're gonna save that. We're gonna save that and show you how much is worth on the market board. But the main thing is, if you come to token exchange guy, and I'm gonna give you an example with the Warrior of Light. Okay. In this case, I have 19 tokens, so I'm gonna buy a shield, which is the cheapest one. Okay. You buy the shield from the primals. This could be done with any primal. I'm just giving you an example with the Warrior of Light. And you just synthesize, you just synthesize it. You will get Ice Clusters, Cobalt, Alloy, Ingot. So you can keep doing this. Let's do another one. And I really advise doing the shield because it only costs three tokens, so it gives you more tries. All the other weapons about ten tokens, but the shield will yield the same type of mats. The same mats, I mean, but will cost a third of the price. Now we got tungsten steel, ice cluster. And let's do it the third time. Okay, so more tungsten steel and ice clusters. So this is what we got from the synthesizing three weapons from the Warrior of Light. Now you can achieve this by buying the weapons with the totems or if they drop in combat and you greed or need and you get them, you can also just synthesize the ones that drop in combat. You don't have to do it just by acquiring the totems. Okay, so we got that those mats so let's go to a retainer real quick and put them up for sale and see how much we get it's 
still sell items in your inventory on the market. The Cobalt Alloy is worth 1 point... 1 point... 1100! Almost 1200 per unit on the market board. So, let's put... Put that for sale. The Stone Gold Ingot was worth 650 per unit. And finally, the Tungsten Steel Ingot, 350. So you just made around 5k already. No, not 5k, but like 3 or 4. And then last but not least, the Battlecraft Demon Materia is worth 288. Worth 280. And with those, will the Cobalt, that's 2. Plus these two, yeah, you get about 3500 gil just out of that uh, just out of the dissenting only those three shields of course you can get the personal item for that the personal drop for emerald which we can show you on the market board So this is one of the items you can get for this by the synthesizing the plate of light Which is worth by itself if you're not a crafter you could sell this straight off uh, Straight off having it dropped at the end of the fight you could sell it by 170,000 gold that is indeed a lot of money but if you are a crafter and you get your hands on the plate of light And you go to the armorer. You got the trophy of light and true barding of light. That's what you can craft with that plate of light, as you can see on the recipe there. The mats are pretty much all almost the same, but one takes megalania leather and the other one takes the purpled bead. So let's see how much the barding of light is going for. Barding Light is going for 1.1 million or 1.2 million and the Trophy of Light is going for 4.6 million. That's right. You can make a ton of gill by combining your combat class with your crafting class, plus your gathering classes to gather all the mats that can be obtained on the overworld for free and sell this at 100% profit. If you have your gathering classes leveled, plus your crafting classes, in this case, gathering plus your armor for four million six hundred and forty nine thousand minus taxes of course of uh, what they charge for this uh, thing to be on auction you get 100 percent of profit you will spend exactly zero gill to make this item and that my friends is probably one of the most profitable and surefire things to get gil in this game. It only requires for you to have patience and to spend some time in the world of Final Fantasy XIV. Now, this one is a bit of a timed one. And what you need to have to make this happen is you need to be a level 78 or higher culinary you need to have your allowances right there at the bottom of uh, the journal you need to have 100 allowances available and you need to be in the crystarium okay from here you're gonna take the eterite like I'm doing it travel to the crystalline meat
and from the crystal you're gonna hang a right and you're gonna talk to this NPC right here Eric here the left meat guy you're gonna go to tradecraft leaves and you're gonna get a cookie for your troubles where you have to deliver three coffee biscuits now the calculations already been done by the good people of Final Fantasy uh, Reddit and in order for you to finish 100 leaves that will net you 1.8 million gil every two weeks and I say every two weeks because the allowances will refill back up by themselves and it takes them roughly two weeks to do but once you get the 100 allowances this will actually take you a few hours to craft you need 900 high quality coffee biscuits okay and this will cost you absolutely nothing to craft if you want to gather it yourself but it will well the only thing that will actually cost you will be the time that you spend gathering and crafting but this is the shopping list you need to complete the 100 leaves and get 1.8 mil you need 300 coffee beans <clears throat> 500 upland wheat 500 garden beets and you need 2100 water crystals and 3500 fire crystals once you have all of that you can craft now remember it has to be high quality you can craft 900 coffee biscuits now the actual craft themselves is gonna be 300 because as you can see right there on my chat log right now uh, every time you synthesize it it comes in groups of three so if you need 900 you only need to craft 300 times to get 900 and this will net you once again 1.8 million gil every two weeks and with that my friends we reach the end of the video I hope it helped out and until the next one peace out